to sing this morning. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord, and, most wor and he is most worthy of praise. Certainly is. Let's uh, uh, want to welcome uh, all of you again, if you're visiting with us. Special welcome to you. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll, we'll continue our worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you for for all that you do for us, uh, we ask that you be with us this morning as we praise your name. Uh, may that it, everything that we do this morning be worthy in your sight. In your son's name we pray, amen. <laughs>
day to be in, in the house of the Lord. I, I uh, am excited to see you this morning. Um, I'll tell you what, we, we've got a, a, a big week coming up. Um, next Sunday is our graduation Sunday. And so uh, we really want to uh, have you to come out for next Sunday and, and see our graduates. We've got a couple of them this year. And so, um, and so we want to, to you to help us honor them. If, you, if I haven't heard from you, it's time, okay? If you're graduating high school or college, you've got to let me know so we can uh, we, we include you in that program. Uh, Wednesday night, I want to tell you what we're doing Wednesday night. Um, it's, we're wanting a little special event to close out our Wednesday nights of the month. And so uh, Brandon Thesey's going to be grilling some burgers and, and hot dogs for us here. Uh, we'll eat them about 6 o'clock. And we've got some, uh, it, since we didn't get to have our kids tonight, uh, it got um, canceled this, this month because of the, the death of my dad. Um, we're going to have some inflatables here for the kids on Wednesday night. Let them have some fun. The adults, we're just going to hang out, have a little picnic atmosphere. We'll do a devotional. And so, uh, and so it's going to be a fun evening for you just to come and hang out here at Christian Valley. So it starts at 6. Be sure and join us. And, um, and, and if, uh, if the weather's bad, well, we can't be outside. Um, we're going to do some inside stuff for our kids with, with some games. And so come on out, hang out with us, and, um, and, and, and just enjoy being around these kids as they play. You know, I've enjoyed the last few weeks. Um, my wife's been working with the kids, and I've really enjoyed it. She likes to have them up on stage, and I like that too. So we're going to ask Miss Bentley Nugent if she'd come up here with us right now. Can I borrow your microphone? Yeah. All right. And uh, Bentley's going to uh, call us to worship. But the fruit of the Spirit gives love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Great job, Bentley. Good job. Here you go. All right. Fruit of the Spirit. I love it. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you. And we pray that each one of us will exhibit these fruits that, you've, uh, that, uh, that we learn from following you. I pray, God, now as we continue to worship and through song that you will uh, open our hearts and our minds to just to get in tune with you, to walk with you today, and to, to leave here today just in, with the peace of knowing that you love us and God that we can, can trust in your faithfulness and your goodness. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stand with us again. Thank you. 
morning, everyone. Let's give our uh, uh, worship group this morning a great hand. They, we always appreciate what you do, especially Dr. Jim. I know you were busy and busy the last couple of days out there with the truck, but I came by and I saw y'all working yesterday. So we're glad to see you here today. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we got in such a big hurry this morning trying to get out of the house that uh, I left my glasses and uh, I was at the mercy of what Susan had in her purse, and thank God it wasn't a big pair of flowery glasses. So, <laughs> Anyway, uh, this morning, uh, I'd just like to ask y'all, uh, I know y'all are familiar with the term bucket list, which uh, describes the list of things usually that a person wants to do or accomplish by the time they pass away. This could be from going and visiting places or uh, seeing special people or whatever. Uh, there's somebody in my family that wants to skydive. Never could figure that one out. But that would be a leap of faith for her. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, the term uh, became a part of the popular, uh, became popular back in around 2007 when a movie called The Bucket List uh, was uh, shot. And it was about two terminally ill men that were uh, wanted to formulate a bucket list and then tried to accomplish those things before they passed away. Jesus lived an extraordinary life. John wrote that uh, it would be per impossible for the world's books to record all of the amazing things that uh, Jesus did. That's in John 21, 25 through 25. No doubt if the term bucket list had been in style in the first century, uh, many people would have placed listening to Jesus or seeing Jesus do a miracle on their list. But Jesus himself had one made item on his bucket list. That item was announced uh, to Joseph before Jesus' birth. He will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21. Jesus spoke of that purpose on other occasions as well, especially as he approached Jerusalem after th his three years of ministry. He had come to give his life as a ransom for many. Matthew 20, 28. He was here to seek and to save the lost. Luke 19, 10. Every human uh, being, every human being that was on Jesus' bucket list, he came, that he came to die for the sins of the whole world. And he, uh, and he, one might say, crossed that item off his list. Many of us put together a to-do list at the beginning of the day or week to help us kind of prioritize and uh, to help us get things done uh, or during the week. And we need uh, communion provides us with that time to reflect on Jesus' to-die list and to remember that each of us was on that list. So I ask you today, is eternal life on your bucket list? Pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and the uh, uh, being able, for being able to uh, get together and to uh, listen to Mr. Uh, Brother Mitch talk or, or guide us through our lives uh, with your word. Pray for everybody today that has uh, problems or things on their heart. We pray that those are relieved. And uh, as we gather around the communion table today, let us not forget that the bread and the wine of Christ's uh, body and blood that he uh, was sacrificed for the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning again. Um, while our men are uh, passing these uh, offering trays, just want to uh, remind you that giving is a, a spiritual gift. I believe that. I believe it's a spiritual discipline, and it's something that we uh, do here uh, to pay the bills, obviously, but I think it's something that you can grow and learn from. We, uh, I told you a little bit about what uh, we got going on this week on Wednesday night. We're excited about that for sure. I'm, a, I'm just really, I, I enjoy our graduation Sunday. Um, I, I think every year it's just a time for me to uh, remember to uh, just continue to encourage and and um, and, and give uh, I guess give make myself available for pastoral guidance and uh, to, because uh, I know this is a very anxious time for our graduates and so if you know of a graduate out there uh, be sure and, and encourage them in a, in a, as, as Jesus would want you to do. At this time, I'm going to allow our kids to head on back to to um, their uh, uh, children's church, and uh, we've got a lot of good folks back there who are um, who are uh, teaching and guiding, and, and we appreciate our volunteers so much. We've had a good group of volunteers, even more in the last few weeks, that have signed up and jumped in to help back there, and so we can never uh, say thank you enough for that for sure um, <clears throat> if you have your bulletin and want to turn ahead to where I'm going to be reading today uh, you should have an outline in there uh, this is a this is just a sermon that's going to bridge the gap for me it's a it's kind of piggybacking off the, the sermon series we did for the last 16 weeks out of the book of Mark and um, and and um, and then it kind of gets us ready for next week we're going to start on graduation Sunday out of a new sermon series from the book of Daniel. I'm going to talk about Daniel for a few weeks, uh, just a courageous lifestyle and a lifestyle of just doing what we're supposed to do and what we know is right in a world that doesn't always live up to those expectations. And so uh, that's what we're doing next week. And I'm excited about, always excited about starting a new sermon series. But for today, I just want to uh, kind of look at what we have been talking about, how we led up to the resurrection, and even last week after the resurrection, and we know that Jesus is alive, and we're going to talk today about the fact that I really believe this is something I'm passionate about, that eternity is real. And I'm just going to tell you, I have, um, uh, <clears throat> not just in the last few weeks, but it seems like it's really just uh, a lot of coincidence, I guess, or maybe the Lord speaking to me, the Holy Spirit working in me, that I've seen a lot of articles, a lot of uh, things on uh, that I listen to, podcasts, and they, that that uh, that a lot of pastors in our country today don't want to speak about um, hell, and and it's just something that we try to avoid. And I don't try to avoid it. Y'all know me better than that. Um, but but it's hard for me. Everybody wants to talk about heaven, and and this all came up because it was Easter and. And honestly, on Easter, it's probably not the best day to be talking about uh, the choices that you could make in eternal life. But it, uh, but because we're celebrating the resurrection and the hope that comes from that. But the, sa the, the stark reality here is eternity is real. I believe that. Heaven is real. I believe that. And if we believe that heaven is real, we have to believe there's an alternative. Now, I'm not exactly going to talk about today to that, that fact today. But what I do want you to know is... Don't leave here this morning not thinking that the way we live this life is going to make a difference as to where we spend the next life. We have to be prepared. I, I made a circle the other day in one of my favorite stores. I am so glad when our boys were teenagers and playing in sports and, and very involved that there was no academy sports here in town. Uh, I think I would have probably been uh, broke all the time. But... Um, but I went in academy sports, and I just uh, made a circle. And as I made that circle, I noticed some guys there in the in the golf section, and they were tr trying these clubs, you know, and, and looking at which golf ball they wanted to purchase because they were the weather was getting a little better, and they were making plans for going out and playing golf. And I walked just a few more steps, and there were all these young kids out here, and their their moms and their dads, and they were in the baseball softball section. And, Boy, they were trying the bats, and they were trying the gloves and the helmets, and man, it was crowded because the baseball season's coming up, and they were getting prepared for that season. You walk on around, there's people trying on running shoes, uh, get around a little farther, camping. There was a camping section there, and I mean, it was crowded, you know, a little weather coming up here, 
okay, let's go camping. And they were trying, they were looking at all the, the stuff that, that you do and make preparations to go camping. You walk a little farther, and it's a hunting section. And they were uh, people in there looking at the, the hunting supplies, the fishing supplies. And you just walk that circle. And what I got from that was they were preparing for something. Wasn't all the same. They all had different ideas, different agendas, different motives, but all of them were preparing. And so I want to ask you this morning, what are you preparing for? How are you preparing? As a, as a Christian, we, what do we make plans for? Uh, I'm just going to tell you, um, as a Christian, I believe, and especially even the excitement we get and the hope we get, the, the joy that we get thinking about the resurrection, why are we worried about the resurrection? Well, because as a, we know that it's sooner or later our life on this earth is going to end. And that's a, I don't want to be morbid today. I'm just going to tell you, spoiler alert, if you, if, you, um, if you take a survey, 10 out of 10 people are going to die. Okay? And so, and so we have to be ready for that. As a Christian, I really believe that we don't have to dwell on death. We don't have to, to, uh, to sit around and, and not, make good, not make decisions. We don't have to worry about investing. We don't have to worry about uh, going to work tomorrow. What's it matter if I go to work tomorrow? I'm going to die someday anyway. Well, that's not the way I want you to look at this. What I want you to know is you're going to die. And we don't know when. <laughs> that's, the, that's kind of the crazy thing. There's no guarantee on when. And so we have to be prepared. Eternity is reality. I, believe, I, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what, what we're talking about here today in a nutshell. Eternity is reality. And you don't even have to be a Christian to believe that. Yeah, I, it, I'm telling you, if you talk to someone and they say, well, I really don't believe that, that I'm going to die, well, they probably need to stop and back up just a little bit because that's way off track. And you can put it off all you want. You can try your best to, uh, to avoid it. You can do it, make all the preparations. But we all know that eternity is reality. In my job, um, this, is, this is something that, uh, that, that I've done many, many times. I've walked with a lot of people and watched a lot of people die. It's, it's a process. It's a progress. From, uh, it might be a, a two-year progress or it might be a, a one-year progress. And, and a lot of people take a long, slow time to die. Our bodies wear out, okay? And the problem is, is that a lot of times our bodies wear out, but, but our heart is just programmed to know I've got to keep pumping. And sometimes, sometimes it just doesn't want to quit. And that's a very excruciating time in there when we're, when we're going through that. And it scares me because I try to, I work out. And I do, and I try to, I could do my cardio, I, 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 I do all these lifts, I do everything I can. I try to eat right, except for this week. I was introduced this week to, to something that has probably set me back for a little bit. It's called crumble cookies, right? Huh? I don't know where these came from, but the crazy thing, on Wednesday, I, I may be sheltered, I don't know. On Wednesday, I ate my first crumble cookie. And then the next day, I got a gift here at church, a whole box of crumble cookies, and my wife was leaving town for the weekend, so I've had to get rid of those things by myself, okay? And, and I think that's probably set me back a little bit, but man, I'm not complaining, okay? Um, I'm glad there's not one in Valley View. That's all I can say. I'd be in trouble. But, but I try to eat right, and, I, and I, why am I doing that? I don't know, because I... I want to live longer, right? But at some point, I'm working on my heart, making it stronger. It's going to keep beating, and the rest of it is going to try to shut down. And so I don't know what to do. So I, I, what I do to try to offset it is I do some just really stupid stuff every now and then. I'm thinking sooner or later, one of those things is going to get me, and I'm not going to have to worry about this long, slow thing. Eternity is reality. The Bible tells us that. In Hebrews 9, 27, give me liberty to read this out of the CEV, Christian um, <clears throat> this, this sort of an everyday Christian version uh, it says uh, contemporary version I mean it says we only die once and then we are judged plain simple 
We only die once. You say, hold it just a second. We're talking about a second death, or a second life, right? We only die once. What's going on here? The Bible talks about a second death. Well, okay, let's, let's just go ahead and say, if you go back and you read all the, 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 the commentaries on that, if you, if you take that back to the original language, it plainly says our mortal bodies only die once. There's no contradiction here in the scripture because we know that it's going to tell us later that we're all uh, judged and and we live that, that there's a possibility of a second death. In fact, it says that in Revelation 21 8. It says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as far as, uh, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. Y'all want to raise your hand as I go through that list? <laughs> that's a that's an ugly list, huh? Their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which what is? The second death. It says it's right there. The second death. And so up here in Hebrews it says we only die once. It's talking about these mortal bodies we live in. They only die once. Here it says there is a second death. And so I'm just going to tell you we have to believe. Do not think that there is not a, a, a possibility of death after this death. All right? That is, it is in the scripture. It talks about it. At any point. To anybody that you hear, any evangelist that you hear that stands up and says, God loves you so much, he would never, ever want you to spend eternity anywhere other than peaceful, happiness, blissful, heaven. That's a lie. That's a false teacher. Don't listen. Turn it off right there. That's not real. Every religion believes something happens after this life. Hindu believes uh, the Hindu believes that uh, that you come back. Okay, you you live, you die, you come back. You live, you die, you come back. You live, you die, you come back. If you live a good life, you come back to something better. If you live a bad life, you come back to something worse. Um, Muslims worship the Allah God. Uh, it, it, you need a Muslim friend. Muslim believe that you gain eternal life by good works and so if you have a muslim friend they're going to do good things for you they're going to they're going to go out of their way to do good things for you because they think they're earning their eternity based on works universalism universalism there's a lot of universalism that seeps into our christian churches it basically says everything's okay i'm okay you're okay we're all okay you do what you do i'll do what i do we're all right we're all going to go to heaven that's wrong Christianity, we believe there's hope. There is hope for eternity, but eternal life in heaven. But I'm just going to tell you, it's not a guarantee. <clears throat> Hell is an option. But we're not going to dwell on that because we believe that if we walk with Jesus, if we open our hearts to Jesus, if we live the life that Jesus wants us to live, imperfect but forgiven, God's grace is sufficient for all of us. If we live that life, if we... If we um, follow the commands of God, then heaven is where we'll spend eternal life. The Bible talks about eternity. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Uh, before we jump into that, let me just say here, he says, for we know. Okay, why? he's writing this to a church, an imperfect church, but why does he say, for we know? I mean, he's assuming that these people know what he's talking about when he talks about eternal life. Paul was talking here to the church, and we're not supposed to be shocked when Paul writes about heaven and hell. Paul says, we know that this life is, is temporary. Did you know that, church? He says, this life is temporary. But we're, we're trying to gain this eternal life reward life on earth will never be eternal it's temporary let me ask you a question who likes to go camping one or two that's okay a few more than I thought guys no, no ladies raised their hand got a few guys in here at last to go camping you know I think that's how why, it, it probably depends on how you define camping do you depend? Do you define camping as an RV? Is that camping? A hotel with an outside pool? Is that <laughs> is that camping for? Yeah, there you go. I said, now we're getting some women say, "Oh yeah, I'm all about that." Yeah. What about a tent? 
Is that him? Uh, see us look fun on television. Looks good on the box. If you're walking around the sporting goods store and you see a tent, you say, wow, that looks like fun. You ever spent the night in a, in a tent in the woods? I was telling, we were telling some friends this week about uh, a few years ago when Robin and I got this wild and crazy idea. I don't know if we'd been watching too much Survivor or something on television, but we, uh, we decided to backpack through the woods, the Buffalo River Trail. We, we hiked nine and a half miles. I had a, a little big bagger, a big bigger backpack than she did. I had our tent on the back, our sleeping bags. We filtered our water. We cooked our food over a fire. There was no, we didn't have any light. We're in the middle and we walked across the Buffalo River Middle of nowhere, pitched our tent, put our sleeping bags in there, just sat out there and watched the stars. And I woke up the next morning, I'm just gonna tell you, I didn't feel too well. You know how like a, a toy, a box, a toy, a box that a toy comes in, and not say like um, recommended for age three and up or five and up. Tent should have a, a message on there, not recommended over the age of 50. I'm just telling you, I woke up, I couldn't hardly walk. I'm like, I don't think I can get back out of this place. It was very uncomfortable. We, um, it was an adventure. It was fun. But I don't want to live in a tent. Tents don't do well in the weather. If it's coming a storm, if the, if the weatherman says, hey, uh, high wind, possible tornado, lot of heavy rain or are you going to go get in a tent? No. Tents are lousy in that kind of weather and they don't last long. How, I don't even know what, what would be like a good life for a tent. Five years maybe? Ten years? You can travel around and see buildings that are hundreds of years old. You see stately buildings and, and, and somebody says, wow, this building is hundreds of years old and, and the weather hasn't bothered it. The, the rains, the winds, the storms haven't bothered it. This, this, verse, um, this verse we read in 1 Corinthians said, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. What's he talking about here? It's, it's hard to, to comprehend this, this place that God has built for us, and I, I struggle with it. You know, after the death of my dad, my, we were sitting around, and, and some of my family asked me to, to, to what I thought about how to describe heaven. That's a hard question. And I think we may all have our different ideas and, and different uh, uh, agendas of what heaven's going to be like. I don't know that mine and yours are going to be the same. Uh, the, our ideas of heaven, it's hard to, to talk about. It's hard to comprehend it because the descriptions we get in the scripture, I believe, it, it's more than these, these writers' words can ever, uh, can ever uh, describe. We can't compare anything we've seen here to what God has prepared for us. Jesus said it this way when he was really trying to explain to his guys what uh, he was getting ready to go through and, 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 he, and you know he, he knew that the cross was, was in front of him and, and he knew that he was going to rise and, and live after that he wanted his guys to be, to be encouraged and so he said in John chapter 14 the first three verses let not your hearts be troubled he said don't, don't, don't get upset over this thing I'm telling you about. He says, believe in God, okay? Believe in God. Believe also in me. Have faith in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Maybe the translation says many mansions. I saw another one that, that this week that said uh, lots of space. I, it, whatever it says is, is okay because it's, more, it's basically saying more than we can comprehend. There's room for all of us there. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that you, that where I am, you may be also. That's a promise. Everything around us is a tent. It, it's temporary. Paul, was, Paul had worked as a tent man. He knew what a tent was. He knew that, uh, I'm sure Paul had been out there before and he, he sold a tent and somebody took it with them and then they came back later and said, hey, Paul, man, you know that tent you sold me? Got a big rip right down the side. You think you could fix that up for me? 
Paul knew tent are temporary. He says, our, but, but then later, and, and another one that I want to clear up that it's not a contradiction because you may have heard this, Paul later says our bodies are what? A temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple. We know that. My body, your body, we're all temples. So how can we be a tent and a temple at the same time? Well, the tent is the physical part, okay? The tent is physical. Our, our bodies are going to wear out. They're, they're going to they're get tired and old. Our, our, but the, our soul is, is, a, is a temple. It's a spiritual temple. When Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, and they saw all these miraculous things. They had trouble believing. They had trouble, their faith uh, faltered at times. But, uh, but, but out here in the wilderness, they wanted a place to worship. And, um, and, and so they, they came up. It was called a tabernacle, but, but it's basically a tent. And I've seen re or reproductions of this uh, t tent, this tabernacle, and it's a pretty elaborate thing. It's huge. Big poles, ropes, uh, all the all the things that you would see in a tent, and uh, and 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 very very solid. But the reason they had a tent was because they knew they would be moving, and when they moved, they had to pack all this stuff up. They had to put it all together, get it all boxed up, and take it with them. And they did this for forty years. They they moved, and they would set up a different place, and they would have a tent there to worship in. And so when they finally got to this place that God had promised them and they loved this new land they were in, they said, we don't want a tent anymore. We want something better. And so it took a while. It took some, <laughs> excuse me, it took some real, a lot of resources. It, when they got a king, they built a temple and the temple was grand. The temple showed the glory of God. And they realized this thing is, is a lot more permanent so it's it's going to be here. Now we'll talk next week in, in our first study in the book in the book of Daniel how uh, an army came in and just demolished the temple. But that temple was uh, compared to that tent. It was very permanent. Second Corinthians. Let's read on in chapter five, starting in verse two. It says, "For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on we are not." Uh, if indeed we, by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. So he says, hey, I know that this tent is going to wear out on you. I know that it's gonna, you're going to have aches, you're going to have pain, you're going to have burdens suffering, you're going to have tribulation, you're going to have all these things, headaches that come along with life, but, but don't worry because someday in the same way that Adam and Eve were, uh, were unclothed in the garden and unashamed, at some point we are going to be made new and we're not going to be ashamed of anything. We're going to be unclothed because, uh, spiritually because everything we have is going to be in the open and we're going to be perfect, we're going to be made perfect in this, this temple that God has prepared for us. If you live in a tent, wouldn't you dream of a time that maybe you could just have a, a permanent dwelling? Think about that. You know, there's a, a, a couple of places in our town that I drive by at, at times where people have put up tents, and that's where they live every day. And, and, and you have to think that maybe they, they dream of, of having a better place. As we live in this tent, we need to dream about a time when we can live in a mansion because our tents are wearing out. Getting old is not for the faint of heart. The golden years are, are a, little, a little bit more complicated than I always thought they were going to be. I'm just going to tell you, I hurt my back this week. You know how I did it? I snoozed. Huh? Seriously, I mean, seriously, I don't know how that happened. I, I was walking, and I was actually here, and I was walking, and I sneezed. I was like, oh, oh that hurt. And I, and I kind of did this thing until I got to my office. I sat in my chair for a minute, and, uh, and, and it, I got over it. It's okay, but, you know, um, when you get older, it's kind of this crazy thing. It's all you think about. Like, you quit making small talk about the weather. 
You don't have to talk about the weather anymore. Old people just talk about what? Their aches and pains. And they one-up each other. You ever notice that? Go to the coffee shop and listen to these old men. They, they start talking and they tell us what's wrong with them. The next guy's got something way worse. That's just, that's just part of getting old. But what it does is remind us that we're not going to be here forever. That, that our days are going to end. That life is fragile. In that last scripture we read there from 2 Corinthians, I, I noticed that something that really caught me and just gripped me this week says, um, said, said the last few words said, swallowed up by life. What is mortal may be swallowed up by life. We know what it means to be swallowed up by life. There's, there's times, there's weeks, there's seasons of our lives that just swallow us up. And we feel like we're just trying, we're like Jonah and the fish. We're trying to get, get back out of being swallowed up. We know how it feels to be overwhelmed. We know how it feels to, to fight the craziness around us. And I'm going to tell you, when it says swallowed up here by life, Paul says that in a good way. You see, your soul is never going to be fulfilled in this world. Think about that. Your soul will never be fulfilled in this world. And, and we need to continue to try. We need to work. And I'm just going to tell you, um, we need to uh, continually just immerse ourselves in prayer and uh, in our walk with God. And we need to try our best to fulfill our soul in this world and, and to let God's goodness overflow within us going to tell you there's always going to be a little blank spot there. Worldly things are incapable of meeting your spiritual need and sometimes we, we, we rely too much on worldly things, possessions. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 5 says, He who has prepared for us this very thing, and God who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. And so that's a game changer right there. God has given us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's in here with us this morning. It's everywhere you go. The Holy Spirit's just kind of hanging out there with you, waiting on you to call on him. So even though the, the world can't fulfill our spiritual needs, God has given us this Spirit that is with us in the world. And so while the Spirit is here with us, God and his Son Jesus are preparing and waiting for us in heaven. Verse 8 in the same chapter says, Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather, <clears throat> excuse me, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. I'm going I'm to close out here with some stuff that, that's just really uncomfortable at times, okay? Do, do you really want to, like, raise your hand and say, preach on, brother, when you hear Paul say this? We are of good courage. That's okay. We need to be courageous. Talk about that next week. And we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Is anybody saying that out loud? Are you afraid you're going to jinx yourself? You know, if you say, well, yeah, that's, that's pretty good stuff there, Paul. That's hard for us to embrace. I don't mind telling you, that's hard for us to, to jump on board and say, man, I wish I was dead. Sure do. Yep. Can't wait. We're, we're almost afraid to read that scripture. And to say it out loud is, is just going way out there farther, but it's similar to what Paul says in the book of Philippians where he says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 21, for me to live is Christ. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Paul says, you know what? When I'm on this earth, I'm going to do one, I'm 100% sold out for Jesus. For me, when I'm living, it's for Christ. But he said, you know what? I would much rather trade all this stuff in cash it all in, and go to heaven. And, and, and I'm just going to tell you, we're, we're not confident in the details of heaven, and, and so that may make us just pull back just a little bit, but we can be confident that there is an eternal home prepared for us, that it's so much better than we could ever imagine, and, and more than that, we can be confident in our salvation. I truly believe that. If, if you have given your life to Christ, if you have said, hey, I, I want to confess my sins, I want to confess the fact that Jesus is my Lord, I want to confess the fact that, that Jesus is my only way to heaven, I want to repent, turn around, 
go the other direction. I've got to get away from my sinful life. I want to go down this road because that road leads me in the wrong direction. I believe. I want to obey. I, I'm, I'm, bab I'm getting baptized into Christ and, 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 and by immersion and all these things. I'm, I'm doing what the Bible says and I'm 100% I'm on board. You can be 100% confident in your salvation. See, I think we live in this world where we'd like to have a scoreboard, wouldn't we? Right? Go to a ball game, what do you do? You're constantly looking at the scoreboard. I never realized that. I mean, I've realized it, but I've never really realized it until, uh, you know, we were going out this year. Our, our grandsons were playing basketball. Uh, if you've never seen four-year-old basketball, you've missed out. It's a whole different deal. But we're going out there, and they didn't have a scoreboard. They had up on the table there, they had this little thing where they just flip numbers, you know? Like somebody scores, they just flip the numbers. Well, from the, the bleachers, you couldn't see the score, and I'm really not sure why it mattered anyway. They're four. But what were people constantly doing? I'm serious, that's a ball game. They were sitting down, and then they would walk up on the court and look at the score and then turn around and tell everybody, uh, it's six to four, you know, and they would tell everybody the score. It was like a human scoreboard. Wouldn't it be awesome if we had a spiritual scoreboard? Huh? Just tell you plainly if you're winning or not? Yeah. Like, okay, I'll, I'll get on my phone. Maybe you can do it on your phone because you wouldn't want it like a big digital way in front of your house where everybody could see it. But you could get on a phone app and you look to the, oh, I did pretty good today. I'm ahead. Yeah. I'm, if something happens to me today, I'm good. We do have a scoreboard. See, out of um, over 4,200 world religions, there's only one empty tomb. There's only one man who conquered sin and death and hell forever, and there's only one way to go to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. And so if you have declared that you are a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, then you are on the winning team. Stand firm. Stand your ground. Don't, don't, don't go the other direction. Do not follow Satan, okay? Realize that you're not perfect, but that God is a God who forgives your sins. Pray that God will forgive your sins. And don't worry about uh, maybe having a few that you hadn't prayed about and getting snuffed out. That's not the way God works, okay? God is gracious, and God is full of mercy, and God is full of forgiveness, and he is faithful to you, and he will forgive your sins. And the scoreboard right now that I see says that Jesus is winning. Eternity is reality. In Hebrews 2, it says that, the, I don't have this up on the board for you, but it says that the death of Christ, but by the death of Christ, he destroyed the power of death, okay? He destroyed the power of death. You know who that is? Satan, the devil. God won. Through his son Jesus, the death on the cross, the blood that he shed, he won. The scoreboard shows that Jesus is ahead. He's winning. So we don't have to worry about death. And so what I'm going to do right now is just put it on you, okay? Let's put this on you just a little bit. <clears throat> so Jesus, is, if Jesus here has done his part and we really believe that, then there's only two choices, right? If we really believe that Jesus died on a cross, that he rose again, that he is alive in heaven and he, along with his Father God, are preparing us a great place up there, then I believe that the choices are real. We either believe that death is going to destroy us or we believe that Jesus has destroyed death. So here's our takeaway today. It's a guarantee that there is life after death. We're not, gonna, we're not even debating that point. That's a, that's a truth. It's 100% real. But I just want you to know that through the saving grace of Jesus, we can not only be assured of eternal life, but we can be assured of spending eternal life with the Father, Son, and the Spirit. So which do you choose? Do you believe that death is going to destroy us, or do you believe that Jesus truly destroyed?
staying with me this morning. We're going to sing.